let me show you how to do a test. First of all, when the patient comes for the test, we will click on the app, which is the Fetosense CTG app. Then, for the first time the patient comes for the test, we need to register them. We will say click to register. We will need to put in the patient's name, age, mobile number and LMP to register them. After we have come to the registration page, we will need to switch on the devices that are needed for the test. The first device we will switch on is the FHR probe. So we take off the charging pod. Then we click on the switch on button and the screen comes alive and the FHR probe is ready to use. The second thing we'll need to switch on is the movement marker. Then we slide on the on button of the movement marker. The blue light comes on and the movement marker is ready to use. Then we switch on the Bluetooth speaker which will amplify the heartbeat sound of the baby. We give a long press at the bottom of the speaker. Power on. It gives us a notification Connect. that it has come alive. After we have switched on all the devices, we will put in the patient data into the slot. The first thing, there is a slot for patient ID. This is an optional field. Hospitals who have a unique patient ID can put it over here else this field can be left blank. The next thing we put is the patient's name. I am using a dummy test over here. After patient's name, we will put in their mobile number. Make sure that the mobile number is correct or else you will have to counter check it up while saving the data. Next you put on the age of the patient. Whatever the age is, it has to come in this middle line between the two black lines. We will slide it if it's say for example tw 25 years, we'll bring 25 to the middle line and then we'll say select and the age is entered. And the last thing that we need to enter is the LMP of the patient. So we open the calendar, we go back to whatever the LMP date is, we select that and we say OK. Once all of this data is filled, we will say save to start the test. The moment we say save, the device asks us whether or not we want to edit the patient data. This data, let me tell you, is editable now as well as later, so you don't need to hurry about editing the data at that very moment. Now you can say OK. The moment you say OK, the device starts reading the components via Bluetooth. And once each device is read, it goes on the screen. Once all of them are connected via Bluetooth, we come to the test screen. At this stage, we will strap on the probe on the patient, the FHR probe, using the belt. The belt is over here, like this. This belt will be used to strap the FHR probe and if required, the TOCO probe to the patient. Then we will give this movement marker to the mother. We will ask her to place her thumb on this button and we will ask her to press on this whenever she feels the baby's movement. Once all of this is done, we will start the test. Now, before I start the test, let me show you how to place the Dopplers on the mother's belly. This is the FHR probe which is placed at the lower side of the belly and this is the strap like I showed you which is put around the belly of the mother and then looped on to this hook. And the TOCO probe is going to be placed on the upper side of the belly of the mother and similarly using the belt it is going to be strapped onto the mother. After the strapping is done and the movement marker is given to the mother we will start the test. I am using an alternate probe over here to demonstrate a dummy test to you. So I am starting the test using the start button. Now I take the FHR probe and I try to create a heartbeat sound. Now, like you see, I am trying to create a baby's heartbeat by tapping on the FHR probe.
here is the count of the FHR and the FHR is being plotted on the upper side of the graph. Like you see here is the count and here is the plotting for the FHR or the baby's fetal heart sum. Here is the movement marker. I will show you how the movements are marked. When I click on this, there is an arrow mark which is created in the blank line in between which marks the movement of the baby. I will give it another tap for you all to see. Here is the second movement marking in the form of an arrow. I will create one more movement marking. I will tap on the movement marker and a movement is created in the blank line where the movements are being marked. Let me tell you, like here is a manual movement marker, this device is also capable of marking autofetal movements. The autofetal movements when they are there are going to be marked in this line just above the manual movement lines and it is going to be marked with a double arrow sign. Let me show you some traces of TOCO as well. Here is the TOCO probe. I am moving my fingers on it and you can see over here the TOCO tracing is happening on the bottom side of the test. Now if at any point you feel the TOCO is not right, you can click on this round button over here right next to TOCO and it will reset the TOCO. The second thing that you can do on this test is using this pencil you can set the test durations. They can be set to 10, 20, 40 or 60. Else if you are doing a labor monitoring you can fix it to no fixed duration. You can maximize or minimize the scale of the test right now. It is the enlarged test. If you want to minimize it, you can use this button over here with a minus sign and you will see more amount of test in one page. Once the test is done, to stop the test, you need to simply press on this red button and the test will stop. At this point, the device will ask you whether or not you want to print this test. So to print the test, you have to just say yes and it can be connected to any printer that is there in your facility. This doesn't require thermal paper. So you can print a normal A4 print from any of the printer that is available in your facility. Else, if you don't want to print it immediately, you just say no. And the test is auto-saved form of a PDF in this device.